Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Where are you running to? Real guns and... Real guns and westerns. Let's check it out. Oh, jeez. Due to events that happened not that long ago, the industry has been getting flack for the use of real guns in movies. I get this question a lot. Why did they even have real guns on set? Well, firearms have been used in movies since 1903, folks. In fact, they use real cars in high-speed chase scenes and real animals in... Well, uh, okay, maybe not real animals all the time. My point is, it's not about the guns. It's about safety protocols. Every set I've been on, firearm safety has been a priority. In the last two, there were multiple points of inspection and we weren't allowed to leave the set with our six gun. So, if you had to go to the restroom, the armorer took your checked gun until you returned. Thank you. Blanks were distributed minutes before the shootout. They don't want you walking around with a hot pistol because blanks can still hurt people. All fairly routine procedures nowadays. We've talked about the making of blanks for live performances and movies. For the western genre, the armorer can make the reusable ones with floral foam and an enlarged primer hole in the case. Mass-produced disposable ones range from plastic or crimped brass, and those can be found in bigger budget films. Factory-produced blank guns are available and in use in some movie projects. The problem is that they are recognizable as fake revolvers in appearance and when they fire because the flame doesn't come out of the barrel. Sure, effects can be added in post-production, but they don't always look authentic and it takes more time and energy. You may find it interesting to know that in the early days, live ammunition was used in the industry. Here, buy bullets. Go, kill, kill the actors. What? In Winchester 73, starring Jimmy Stewart, he wins a shooting competition by blasting coins out of the sky. They filmed that with Stewart standing on two boxes and the camera placed behind his shoulder. Just beyond the camera was trick shooter Herb Parsons, who actually shot the coins out of the air. In the movie Fastest Gun Alive, Glenn Ford shows the town how fast on the draw he is by having a person drop a full mug of beer, which he shatters with a bullet before it hits the ground. Ford had a blank gun, but not far from him was gun expert Rod Redwing, who did the real shooting with a 22 rifle. Look at the actors lined up on either side. Man, back then you had to have a modicum of trust. It wasn't just westerns. In the 1931 film Public Enemy, starring James Cagney, he has to duck behind a corner just before a World War I vet perforates it with a real machine gun. Cagney would eventually refuse to be shot at with live ammo in movies. When he helped start the Screen Actors Guild, this is one thing he made sure actors were protected against. My mother thanks you, my father thanks you, my sister thanks you, and I thank you. I'm sure there are more of these stories in Hollywood. The fact that some of these actors were war vets who no doubt suffered some PTSD isn't lost on me either. These days, ricochets are made with paintballs filled with dust and bullet holes with squib charges. These practical effects are a joy to witness. I've been fortunate enough to be shot at with a few dust balls and been inside a train car that was getting shot up with a Gatling gun. Sure, you still need safety because all these things can injure you. Well folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, Patreon for $3 a month. We're doing extra footage, content, bloopers, all sorts of fun stuff. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail.